Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, so it's July 1st, 2024, and we're here with Roger and Richard Kane. Um, and we're just going to talk about um, your memories of Freehold, growing up in Freehold. So we'll start with um, when and where were you born? We'll start with you, Roger. Okay, I was born in Neptune at Fitkin Hospital, uh, which was the only hospital in those days. I mean, we had uh, if somebody had an emergency, uh, the first aid had to take them to Fitkin. Uh, there was no such thing as Freehold Area Hospital. Or they'd go to Dr. Reynolds, who had a small, um, well, you could do procedures there, but it was in an operating room. But uh, that was considered the hospital in Freehold for something not serious. Anything serious, first aid had to take a two-hour or half-hour ride, but it was two hours by the time they went back, uh, forward and back. But luckily, in those days, it was um, Karagushin um, was operating, and that's where most of the volunteers came from. It's always been a volunteer first aid, uh, but most of the volunteers came from Karagushin, and they permitted them uh, to answer the calls. Yeah, so it was um, it was interesting uh, in those days, you know. Uh, I could continue. Um, All right, well, yeah, so what year were you born in? I was born in 1940. 1940. I've lived my entire life in Freehold. Um, as a matter of fact... Um, my wife and I have talked about moving a few times and maybe moving to Manasquan, which is what a lot of Freehold people did. Uh, but we said we were too involved. I, I was always involved in Freehold and what was going on. So we decided to stay. We've been on our house on South Street for 50 years. Um, it's actually two blocks uh, from where I grew up. Uh, so I haven't gotten very far. <laughs> but I, I've enjoyed my time here. I mean, it's a great town. Uh, and it's always been a very diverse town. Um, we went to, I went to grammar school here, um, St. Rose, uh, when it was on McLean Street. Uh, matter of fact, I walked by Bruce's house every day going to school, um, the first house on Randolph Street. And um, uh, that was interesting, uh, kind of scary. Uh, the house was kind of creepy. I, I don't know, you know what anybody said about it, but it was... Uh, it was kind of old and decrepit, uh, you know, and I won't rag on Bruce's house, but uh, uh, certainly now he's okay. He, he can <laughs> he have any house okay he wants. Now, yeah. Yeah. His, his house is okay now. Uh, but um, just walk into school. We walked to school, and then uh, um, in those days, uh, the military school was there um, right on South Street, and uh, St. Rose was on McLean Street across from the church. Um, and then when I graduated from St. Rose, I went to high school, Freehold High School. And, you know, we, we had, um, there was racial tension in the 60s. But we grew up, um, uh, we grew up not knowing anything racial. I mean, it was not a problem. I mean, I played ball with uh, African-American boys in, in those days. We called them colored boys, you know. Uh, but nobody took offense to that because that's just what the way it was. And we played ball together. Um you know, I, I had like four or five buddies that uh, uh, were uh, colored, and um, uh, I would bring them over to my house for lunch. I mean, mom never knew who was coming for lunch, but she always had room for some, everybody, you know. Um, and you knew everybody in the neighborhood, um, and, and we called everybody in the neighborhood Mr. and Mrs. No such thing as, you know, first names or any that kind of stuff. Um, so it was a, a time of, of respect, and of course... Later on, um, we had the problems in Freehold when the Vietnam War was going on, and like everybody else, not everybody else, but Asbury and some of the other towns, we had our share of problems too. Um, and, and some of the uh, um, some of the racism came out at that point. Um, you know, there were some uh, incidents uh, and things, but uh, all in all, it's been a great town, very diverse, and and. Uh, you know, I mean, we had we played on Lincoln Street. Lincoln Field was right down the street, um, and we played with all the kids from the from the hood. It was a neighborhood at that point, but from the hood, and um, all races, uh, all religions. You know, um, and we go down there, and and that's when you could get into it. It was not um, um, private or like it is now. Uh, I'd love to see the borough buy it uh, and open it up again as a park. But anyway, um, 
we'd go down there and we'd just have a, a, a great time. And we'd come home at dinner time, you know. So that's, that sounds wonderful. That's what it was, it was, I'm telling you, it was a great town to grow up in. Uh, and it's still a great town. I, I still love this town. I never had any desire, um, even though we talked about it once, as I said, I never had any desire to leave. This is my hometown, too. <laughs> and you, where were you born? Were you born in the same hospital? Same hospital, same house, same hospital, same... Uh, uh, been there for a very, very long time. I always thought, uh, not until I got older, but I always thought growing up in Freehold was like Opie from um, um, the show or Tom Sawyer, or a little bit of Huck Finn. Just a, a smattering of, of everything. Huck Finn would be the, just don't tell my mother and father. And and Tom Sawyer, but Opie was, was you know, Mayberry, USA. And I thought where we were, Hall Avenue, the corner of Hall and Kiowa, we were, we were close to everything. You could walk downtown. Um, you could walk to the right and go, like Roger said, to um, Lincoln Field, where we played pickup games. Um, or you could walk to the left if there was a parade in town. We were central to the entire area. Uh, as I got older and we were allowed to ride bikes, our parents were good people. Um, strict, but not overly strict. You know, there, there always was a line, uh, and, and you just couldn't break the line. But we, and, and and I thought, you know, if, if you remember the, the show Cheers, where everybody knows your name, that's how it was where we were and where Freehold was. All the people in our area were Mr. or Mrs. Like Roger said, we never called anybody by their first name. But we knew everybody. And if you got in trouble, if you did something, um, your parents would hear about it before, before um, we did. Growing up was well. Once we got our bikes, then it expanded our borders, and we could just go anywhere to a place called um, to Center Street, which was a place called Texas. How it got its name, I don't know. But you could you could um, take your bike and you could ride down there. The key was your friends. You all of your friends did the same exact thing. Um, our dad, uh, as we got older. Our dad, we had we had a, a garage in in the back of the house, um, and Dad put up a, uh, um, a, a, square, basketball a square basketball hoop, a piece of plywood, um, and that became the place. Everybody, anybody who who played basketball before high school, played played there, and and we had an unofficial rule, and the rule simply was. No blood, no foul. If if you didn't, if it didn't cause blood, it was not a foul, which certainly wasn't true. But um, we did that. Um, Roger and I played in Little League. Uh, I was lucky enough. I was eight years old, and um, I was lucky enough to play to sign up. I went with a guy that was two houses down. Didn't know anything about it. I said to my parents, "Can I sign up?" Sure. So we went to, there was a fellow by the name of Willie Goldstein, had a soda ice cream um, place, and he was the president of Lily. So we went down there, we signed up, it was on Center Street. And then we would play, and if you didn't play, you were always at the game, just to see all your friends play. And I remember um, we would do the parades, and there was a lady, a woman, Mrs. Parker? Mrs. Parker donated the land for us to play. We were the first Little League team in the area. So, but... What the, was your name? What was the name of the team? The, I, we were the Cardinals, weren't we? Yeah. We were the... How many years ago that was? We were the Cardinals. And... and um, well, it was I, 1951. Yeah. What's the age difference between you two? Two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah, years. he looks older, but yeah. uh, I've had a I'm tougher, actually the oldest I've had a tougher one. life. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, and, and I, I will state clearly here, um, Roger and I were both 
very athletic in terms of playing, but Roger was a much better athlete, much better baseball player, but a much better athlete. But anyway, we would go on our um, little uh, parade and we'd always go by um, Mrs. Parker? Parker's house. Oh. Mrs. Parker's house. And as you went by, you would have to tip your hat to Mrs. Parker and she'd wave. She was an elderly woman, but there would have been no Lulig at that time without her saying, I will give you the um, um, the acres to, to play, to start Little League. I also was involved with um, Boy Scouts and I went um, once a month to the Carnegie Library because there was a thing called um, Boy's Life. It was a magazine and I would go there on that particular day, ride my bike, um, go into the, to the library, read cover to cover, um, boy's life, and, and I look forward to it. So uh, the, the great thing about Freehold, and I went to Freehold High School like Roger, played sports like Roger, um, uh, but, the, but the important thing was it was just a place where you could do stuff. You had to do it on your own, um, but you could do stuff. I'll, I'll give you one classic example, then stop talking. Um, we, we went down Center Street to the Soar Farm, and in the Soar Farm, there were all these like tadpoles and all that kind of stuff, and somebody came up with giant, the giant idea of getting, getting one of those silver buckets, the old buckets, put some water in it, and then, um, uh, put put a bunch of tadpoles in it um, and put it, somebody said, well, um, Richard and Roger, why don't you put it in your backyard? I said, oh, okay, yeah, I'm sure our parents won't mind. So we did that. We put it in our backyard. Um, and the next day, the next door neighbor came and said to my dad, John, said, John, where are all of these little baby frogs coming from? <laughs> where did the frogs come from? Because overnight, um, they matured into frogs, and and they're all over his. And he, he was meticulous about his flowers and all that stuff. And they were all in his um, flowers and all. And he said to my father, John, you know where you know where these things came from? John said, I have no idea. And he did. I have no idea. So it was that kind of a. You know, it was that kind of growing up where you just. You had to make your own fun, but when you made it, it was with a bunch of, and you never got in trouble. Um, the only the only thing we ever had was just be home by, you know, when it starts to get dark, be home for dinner. That was the only rule. But can I just interrupt? Sure. But, but they also, we also had a movie theater downtown, actually two movie theaters downtown. The Strand Theater, which burned down in the late 60s, I think. Um, and they used to have movies every Saturday, and, and you'd go there, and it, they had the news. It came on with the news. First it was the news. And then they'd have, like, uh, races. You'd get a ticket when you went in. They'd have, like, races and things, crazy races, and a number would win, and you'd win a prize or stuff like that. So the Strand was always a big attraction. And the, the Liberty Theater was right where Bowen Alley. There was a Bowen Alley right there. And that was another place we used to go to. Um, they had the greatest pinball machines. Uh, and we used to spend our nickel on, on pinball, um, but then some of our um, ingenious uh, friends, uh, they probably went on to be engineers, found a way to fix the pinball machine so you could use a wire to kind of jiggle it and you wouldn't have to pay. So um, they went in, they, they probably went on to be engineer or maybe they're in prison, I don't know, <laughs> by now, but it was, it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of things to do um, we had a, a little grocery store down the street from, uh, um, from, um, the ball field from, uh, Lincoln field. And we'd play there in the afternoon or go in the morning and then go down and get a, a soda or go to the firehouse. Firehouse had a machine, uh, with bottles of Coke, nickel machine. Uh, and that was another big hangout, you know. And our uncle was a fireman. So we would go there, um, and it would just for a nickel, and uh, we said, "Let's go see Uncle Noppy," and 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 we after we were done playing, um, we we would get our soda. There was also a place, a diner, 
Well, there were two places, but there was there was a diner, um, which is the diner that Bruce frequents quite often now. Um, it was called Tony's Diner, but um, and and this was way back. But um, and I certainly hope Tony doesn't hear this. But well, Tony certainly has passed his son. Um, but but we we used to call that, and we always went there uh, a lot, right up through and including high school. Can I guess? The Greasy Spoon? Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what it's called. That's a marvelous <laughs> guess. <laughs> it was called the Greasy Spoon. But later on, we shortened it to the spoon. Okay. You know, not for no reason. You know, we just cut out the greasy part. Mm-hmm. No reason. But it was called the spoon. Where, where do you want to go? Let's go to the spoon. You know, that type of thing. But it's really called Tony's Diner. Now, I had heard Tony had something wrong with his leg. Is that right? I don't remember that. Do you have, remember I remember... That? Um, wasn't it um, Ron's wife that told us that he had difficulty with his leg? Maybe. He would slide yeah. stuff down the bar, is that or down? Oh, the that bar. part's that part's true. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, it yeah. was it was what you see is what you get, and but um, we would get, go there as kids. But mm-hmm. the adults back then, when we were kids, they 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 would have they would have the tables, but they would also have a bunch of a bunch of um, stools. They're still there. And and it it would be crowded in the morning. They would all go down to have breakfast, but also to gossip. Just so, what's going on lately, or where? Did you read the paper? You know that type of thing. And that was the to to go to place. The place was the American Hotel, but Tony's the Spoon was uh, just just the, where everybody knows your name. Where you know. But. I'm not sure. I don't know about Tony. I, I knew Tony very well because he loved the horses. Uh, and we used to go to track every once in a while. Well, he'd go to track often, uh, more than I did. But uh, um, when I was in high school, I used to come hustle home and go to the track. The track was open every day. In those days, we used to get like 10,000 people on a Saturday at the raceway uh, to the point where we had to put in um, permit parking over there because there was no room for people to park. Uh, but anyway, I used to go over there after school and walk the huts. Um, the horses, after they got done racing, have to walk for a while to w- cool down. And I used to get like a nickel uh, to 50 cents once in a while, you know, um, somebody that was really well off, I guess, would give me 50 cents. But it was just another, and so I spent a lot of time at the racetrack. But Tony um, liked the other end of it, where the windows were. Um, so, and I, I saw him there often, so I, I don't know about a bad leg. I mean, that's, that's possible. And maybe I was thinking of a cook or something, some, I don't know. But, but, I don't know. but it was I'm very popular. The cooks were but, but the part about sliding the food down, I'm that, sure that that's very true. true. Yeah. Might not have had anything to do with the leg, but, but Tony was, when, when we came around, was older, you know, um, uh, but he, he he was just a fun guy to be around, and he would mess around with you, like you know he would, how are you doing, and what's what's going on. So we we would go there a lot. So when it was my turn, right? Roger was older. When it was my turn to play sports at the high school, we would we would walk. It's about a mile, I guess, from Hull Avenue to the school. We walked every day. Um, but when we when we would would come back, if it was during the day. We would um, go to the spoon if if it was at night when we played basketball on like Friday night or something. I'd be walking with these two other guys, and we'd go there and we'd pull one of those. How much you got? How much you got? And we would we would figure enough so that we had enough. We always went to Fed's Federici's Pizza, and and it was after a Friday night game, um, and we'd get enough for uh, one. One thing of pizza, you know, a, a whole pie, uh, and and water, and that was it. Was almost like religious that we would just, but but that was that was what we did, um, and then and then all of a sudden we were getting old. This is just a one story. We were um, we we were getting older, uh, and we wanted to get a job. So first job I ever had was working at Blueberry Acres, which is picking the blueberries. With a fellow by the name of Bob Narcus, whose dad owned Food Town, uh, and 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 Stan Bega, whose 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 stepfather was the police chief, um, and uh, uh, 
my mother would take us or some of the other mothers would take us. So my mother picked us up one day because it was in Collingswood, right by the circle. And uh, um, she said, how, how'd it go today, boys? How'd, how'd you do? I said, Mom, we got fired. What do you mean you got fired? Well, what happened was we would be picking all these blueberries and we didn't know how to pick well. You weren't allowed to pick the green ones, only the, the uh, blue ones. Um, and Stan Bega, or not, Bob Norcus stood up one time, back was hurting, and he said, I hate blueberries. Well, the next row over was the guy in charge. You hate blueberries? You hate blueberries? You don't have to come back anymore. You're fired. Well, if he got fired, and he was all right, right. we got fired. So I said, Mom, we got fired. It's your first day. What do you mean you got fired? It's a long story, Mom. Um, so anyway, I wanted to give you that story. First so, day, huh? Yeah. Wow. Hey, you know, but but it was uh, but being honest, it was it was. We love Freeholdboro, you know, like um, um, we we just did stuff. Roger hung out with his guys, but there was a time when Roger hung out with what I thought were cool guys. So, I said, "Can I go with with you guys?" And they were two and a half years old. He said, "No." No, find your own friends. Go to my mother, my ace in the hole. Said, Mom, Roger says I can't go with him. So um, my mother would say, Roger, if you want to go with the guys today, you got to take Richard. So that's how I had Roger I hated that part. <laughs> um, well, tell about the owl story. It was it wasn't quite that bad, but uh, yeah, we uh, we used to do. Um, we we were kind of uh, adventurous and stuff, and uh, the Huck Finn Park. Saint uh, Saint Rose had a steeple. It still has a steeple, but it, it, those days it was bigger, uh, higher, and um, we we used to go up there and collect pigeons. So this one time we went up there, um, and uh, you always had to be careful where Monsignor Cooker was uh, because he was took great offense to anybody going up. Very the old, very ornery. Uh, well, he had a bulldog, and as he got older, he looked just like the bulldog. He did. Um, you know, I don't think that's sacrilegious, is it? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, but he anyway. Did, he doesn't know we thought This that. one day, we're up in the... Uh, uh, steeple. Steeple, and we're trying to get uh, pigeons, and we see an owl. There's a baby owl up there. So we brought the owl down, and this thing is making all kinds of noise. I mean, a wild screeching and stuff like that. Um and Father Cooker was in the church, and he saw us. And I thought we were going to get excommunicated that day. Yeah, um, it wasn't that was, a good scene. But that one got our parents involved. Mom and Dad had to come down to talk to him at the rectory. Uh, so it wasn't a good, uh, turned out not to be a good adventure. <laughs> we went to St. Rose. Roger did, I did, and our, our sister Carol did. The worst words you can hear is, tell your parents, I want to see them 6 o'clock mm. tonight. That was the worst thing because you knew. And then you had to go home and tell them. And then, of course, you had to say, honest to God, Mom, it wasn't our fault. We didn't do anything wrong. And certainly we did, whatever it was. It wasn't so bad if Mom came down. Yeah. But if, the, if Dad had to come. When, when the big guy came. <laughs> Your parents were Irish? Yes. Okay. And yeah. were they first generation here or they were? No. No. They actually, weren't. They were actually they, third it, it, it was it was John Kane our dad's name was John but it was John Kane the senior he was the first I did some genealogy he was the first then Thomas Kane um, he was the first and he came over to escape the the famine you know the famine was 1841 yeah he he was um, so so he came over he married his cousin but back in those so now you think whoa you can't do that but but one farm, our people were potato farmers. One one farm was here, one farm was here. So rarely did they see one another. So someone marrying their cousin was not a big, oh, wow, wasn't that at all. So they got married, they had a child, they, they brought over and settled here in America, um, over over in, in Freehold Township. Um, uh, and then this, that was John was the first one, Thomas was the second. John Senior, 
our grandfather was the third, and then John Jr., and then us. Don, John Sr. was, uh, he had a farm on Dutch Lane Road, and he was a potato farmer. He was like, um, I think maybe second generation here. Um, I don't think he was first generation, um, but he was a potato farmer over there, and uh, our father uh, worked on a potato farm, and he said, no way, this is not for me, this is too hard work, uh, and so he moved into the borough uh, and brought um, uh, Pop-Up uh, with him, uh, and he became a, uh, a house painter. Uh, well, actually, he worked in national lead before that. He did, uh, and he couldn't get. Yeah, he couldn't. He was uh, deferred from the service because he was making bombs. Uh, national lead was making bombs and stuff, and so they were part of the yeah. war effort. Uh, but anyway, he uh, then he became a, a painter, uh, house painter. But I guess now you would call it a, a decorator. Uh, but in those days, it was just a plain old house painter. But he had a crew. Uh, but um, uh, then my they all moved into freehold. Um, and then during the war, uh, when, uh, uh, my two uncles, uh, went off to war, he had everybody in the house, uh, our father, uh, grandfather, uh, yeah. my oh, aunts, two aunts. Yeah. So they all lived in this, in the house on Hall Avenue. Um, and I, I was gonna, uh, uh, going back to what Roger said about the, um, this is a little trivia, going back to what Roger said about them. Potato farmers, they were. Potato farmers didn't make a lot of money. Um, and, and, you know, they, they grew a bunch of crops until, uh, and this is how it got its name. This is a true story. Until the discovery uh, in Marlboro, in, in, in the soil, a, a thing called marl, M-A-R-L. And that's how you got Marlboro. But marl was a natural um, ingredient that that really f made the um, made the, the the potatoes grow. They sold all the potatoes, including um, you know our grandparents bringing the potatoes to the market yard. But but with the advent of of marl, uh, the potatoes just took off. That's where the um, uh, the the, um, the all the all of the trains came in, and they went all over the place. Just with the discovery. Well, of yeah, Holland and Chesney over by um, the old railroad station by the bug mill was one of the biggest potato distributors in the area. Uh, and the trains used to come in. They, the farmers would bring their train their potatoes over to their yards and they would sort them and ship them off to all over the United States, uh, the potatoes. This was a big potato area. Uh, when we were growing up, there was... Um, there was very few uh, of the housing developments that you have now. It was all farms. It was either orchards or potato farms. Um, and, and you could ride down the road. There was one traffic light, um, and that was out towards Moors. Um, but that was all there was, you know. Um, you didn't have the same number of cars. Um, so it was a much, it was a great time to grow up, a great time to be in the country. This was considered country at that point, you know, and, and, uh, um, I guess, uh, uh, we didn't know what we didn't know. So we weren't missing anything. Uh, we had everything we needed right here, right here in town. And, and the, the good part was if you ever see any of the old maps, um, it will show, a section of freehold, the borough, right here with, with all of the, um, some of the, the wealthy houses and, and all of the businesses and surrounded by farms all, all over. Um, and then as the years went by, you know, the houses would, would uh, expand out. But um, it was just, there, there was um, there was a movie. Um, and and the the main song is how are things in Glockamora? Uh great great um, I'm an old fast great great song, and and it basically describes Freeholdboro, where it's in, in Scotland or Ireland, you know, the, where it's supposedly um, been filmed, and and it just is got, it talks about these two guys that accidentally going for a hike like like going over to Scotland to hike. And um, they discovered this town, and it's 
the song is Howard Thanks and Guacamora. And it's everybody happy, everybody jumping around, everybody doing everything. And I thought, son of a gun, that's the borough, you know. <laughs> and certainly, are we biased? Probably, you know, in that we love the town. We, we, we love where we grew up. We thought where we grew up was the center of the universe because you go in any of the directions. And, and um, so one of the things that, that needs to be said is our parents, mom and dad, dad worked, mom is a homeowner, taking care of us and Carol. Um, but they also volunteered. They, you know, and when Little League started and Babe Ruth League started, dad became a coach so that, you know, we could play ball. Um, and mom would always work in the... Uh, and where you sell the hot dogs and hamburgers and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and so they did that. And, it, you know, it's the old story. Well, why are you doing it? Well, you know, well, you raised your hand, so don't complain. That was our mom and dad. They raised their hand. So as the years gone on, as they got older, that's what we do. You know, we do a lot of volunteering for no reason other than that's that's how we made it. That's how we, we got together. And well, an, another part of, of uh, growing up, too, was um, Lake Toponimus, the Freehold Pond. I'm sure you've heard of Freehold mm -hmm. Pond. Um, we used to go out there every day swimming, um, you know, and they had a raft probably about 10 feet from shore. And when you learn how to swim to the raft, you came of age. Because then you could swim far enough. And, and it looked like in those days it was in 20 feet of water. It was probably just in 8 feet of water, you know. But uh, that's where everybody went. That was a go-to place uh, because um, unless you had a car, you couldn't go to Manasquan. All the others that uh, yeah. uh, went to Manasquan uh, when they could. But, uh, you know, every day we'd ride our bikes out to the pond and, and swim out there. They had lifeguards. I mean, so it was, it was a great sport. Part of, Place for recreation, and they had lifeguards, and they had a a that little white shack that that you could buy hot dogs, hamburgers, or whatever. And then in the winter time, the first aid. See, everybody everybody jumps in. The first aid would sell hot chocolate. Um, so back in those days, well, if if you try the winters here now, um, you you'll go up to your knees. But in those days. Uh, the ice would freeze quickly, and it would be pretty solid, and 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 you'd skate all over, and and the first day would come, and they they'd sell, uh, they they would sell the hot chocolate. But the the other thing is and provide lighting and provide lighting, yeah. And the other thing is, um, we used to, because it was silt. It was a lake. It was not, you know, the bottom was silky, so you'd go out with a white bathing suit. And when you came back in, it'd be light brown. No, I don't. <laughs> yes, I, we've I, always I, had this contention. I, I, we didn't. It did with mine. That's the way it is right now. If you go out there now, because of all the farms that we had in those days, mm -hmm. the, it was washing away and stuff. So that was silt that washed in. But in those days, that water was crystal clear, and you could go out there with a white bathing suit and come out with a white bathing suit that was later years that uh that happened that, when, when the, you know had the, the all the land was being disturbed and it was washing down i mean we'd have a heavy heavy rainstorm and down route 79 yeah. it was like a red river coming in and that feeds that was one of the things that fed into mcgillard's brook which fed the pond so that's one thing we totally disagree on the only uh, way that you would come out with a white bathing suit would be if you changed underwater when you were out in the way and then came out. But but ask Roger to tell you about one of our most famous um, projects. We, we volunteer a lot. Roger is the chairman of, of Lake Toponymous Lake Toponymous Commission. I used to be the recreation director. We do because that's what was taught to us. But ask Roger about our f famous foray into creating a um, ice skating rink on, on Lake Toponimus. Um No, that wasn't Lake Toponimus. Oh, geez. We're, oh, oh uh, geez. Um, yeah. On, uh, on the pond. And now, let's try it again. Um, <laughs> down the street. Um, uh, uh, okay. Uh, we decided uh, one time, because recreation was very successful, 
and we are always trying to do something innovative uh, to um, enhance the experience of the kids. And so we decided in Lincoln Field that we were going to build a ice skating rink, a, how, a decent sized ice skating rink. How hard could it be? Um, and so uh, they were doing some work on the railroad tracks. Uh, and so we had to borrow some the railroad ties, you know, the big ties, the real big ones. Yeah. So we you know asked, how our, you know, how our lookout was. You allowed to tell? Yeah, I'm allowed to tell. Oh. I was going to tell. Okay. It's being it's, now we're being brothers, uh, <laughs> but um, we had one of our um, Freel's finest uh, watch out for us, make sure that no railroad guys came along. And so we, we got the ties. Um, we didn't borrow. We borrowed them, and we had we got this big sheet of plastic covered a whole field, uh, and we did the whole infield. And so um, we got a fire truck because uh, most of us were in the fire department at that point, point. Um, and we had firemen that came and helped us. So we had the fire department help us fill this ice skating rink. It was beautiful when we left it. It was starting to freeze over, mm-hmm. um, and it would have been a nice skating rink for the. We're down in the firehouse celebrating downstairs and uh, uh, having a few beers for celebration. Celebration, and all of a sudden, Bud Ryan, who was the superintendent of the Streets and Roads Department, came in and said, "Who had that great idea to flood Hull Avenue?" What happened was we never measured if it was level or not. And so as it started to settle, the broke one side broke loose, and the water went right onto Hull Avenue and so, solid sheet of ice. He said he had one lady that tried to stop at Clinton Street and slid almost down to South Street. Into South Street. We had two or three cars were frozen to the curb, uh, to the curb couldn't get out. So um, we spent the next couple hours on the back of his pickup truck shoveling sand. Yeah, uh, it was so a that, great idea though. Because we were doing so well that we talked even about the next year doing a ski jump. Yeah. But we never, we never tried to do that. So we, it, was, it was fun. We had a lot of fun. We were the first ones to uh, start a recreation program in, in Freehold. Uh, and we did it with five parks. Um, and, and it really went over very well. Uh, and two of Roger's kids... Um, yeah, I, my nephews and nieces um, would would always come to Lincoln Playground and and they loved it. And we did a lot of things. We we'd go to to the Philly games. We'd take the kids here. We'd take the kids swimming at Camp Hepburn. So we did a lot, a lot of stuff. The kids, uh, Rogers kids, would always call me Uncle Rich. So the kids all figured, I guess that's the guy's name. So. Throughout, yeah, I'd be walking downtown or doing something, and I hear this Uncle Rich, Uncle Rich, and I have no idea who. Yeah, you know, it just it was such a fun, fun thing. But the one thing that kind of like I'm proudest of, uh, Roger was the mayor, I was the recreation director. My family were watching a movie called um, um, the Adventures of Tom Sawyer, and in one he scene, was the rec- excuse me, he was the recreation director before I became mayor. Oh yeah, so there was no nepotism yeah. there. It wasn't know, like the Kennedy <laughs> brothers. So, so, um, uh, so as a family, we're watching The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, and uh, in in one of the scenes, they you know it's they all had this like while they rolled up to the sidewalks and then and went out into a big field, and they did like the races where you hold the people's ankles, the mm-hmm. wheelbarrow races, those kinds of things. Um, and we did, it was, and it was very successful on the TV. So the next day I go to Roger, I said, Roger, I got an idea. He said, what's that? I said, I want to do an old-fashioned town day. He said, instead of saying, great idea, or wow, yeah, yeah, or Roger's opening comments, I don't even know if he remembers. Roger's, which as a mayor, he's got to say, uh, Roger's opening line is, you got money for it? And I said, no, but come on, that's never stopped us. Come on, it would be a great idea. What we did then was we went to all the organizations, um, Catholic, Jewish, uh, Bethel AME, all the, and say, would, would, would you 
do do a booth? Would you do a booth? Would you do a booth? And 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 then what was that big um, um, thing um, that we used to do? Well, yeah, almost anything almost goes. Almost anything goes that they had on TV. Well, they did it on TV, and then they did it out at um, Great Adventure. So I said to Roger, "We can do that. We'll go to the different, you know, organizations." And we did, and that was forty-seven, forty-eight years ago, something like that. Well, it was in the nineteen seventy-six, late seventies. We yeah. did it to honor uh, America. Is is what we did. Um, went really well, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and 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 we're still doing it. We still, August third this year will be. You know, I'd said to Roger, at some point, Roger, that bell's going to ring, you know, in terms of age and all that stuff. And he said, not yet, not yet. So, so well, as long as we can still do it, uh, that's yeah, we're it, doing, you know. It, so it was just an idea. Like, it was like a big reunion, a big picnic to get everybody together. And, and that's the way it's turned out. It's uh, We yeah. have people coming back from college. Uh, seeing their friends and stuff like that, so it's just a big social day. It's nothing has no importance uh, other than get together. Mm-hmm. So my point in bringing that all up is, that's what we started this conversation with. Well, what was it like when you were growing up? That was it, and now it expanded to our parents, and now it expanded to us, and now we've got the kids slowly involved because. Uh, how are things in Glockamora? You know, it, it, it's just... People, Richard has always been the romantic. I, I am, I'm a hopeless romantic. That's <laughs> absolutely true. I will never deny yeah. that. Uh, but I am. But, but, but it's every once in a while, he doesn't say this, but every once in a while, like when Roger was the mayor, or, or if I come up with an idea, I said, Roger, i got to talk to you. He said, no, we're not going to do it. And, and without me even having to say what I think we should do, but uh, is it, I mean we we have what I think is the largest Halloween parade in Monmouth County. I really do. Um, but it started with us, and then we got out of it. All we do is we put up the uh, corn stalks, um, and other people have taken over. And to me, that's the ultimate compliment. You know. Uh, people because and I don't mean to be redundant because we had a great childhood we really did we I was I'd like to think we were lucky but we weren't lucky people looked out for us and 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 so that's how I feel well it was a different time um, you know it was a totally different time it's when uh, um, if you if you did something uh, and it wasn't right. Your parents knew it almost as quick as it was done. So uh, everybody looked for everybody. We never locked our doors. Um, and it was just such a different time. It was a great time to grow up and to be in a small town. Now, my wife is from New York. And she says the same thing about New York. She, it was a great time to grow up in New York in a city. Uh, she took the subway. She took buses to school. Um, and never had a worry. So it was a great time to grow up, and Freeld was the perfect town, in our mind, uh, to grow up in. So um, the things that we did as kids were probably replica- replicated in many other small towns, but this was the center. Freeld was the center of, every, of everything that was happening, and the yeah. recreation program that Richard talks about, uh, we were the first ones, first town in the area yeah. to have a program like that. So it was it was a lot of firsts, but it was the right time, you know. Stuff some of the stuff we did you couldn't do today. <laughs> Thank God, probably. Can I just give him two last stories? Yeah, I'm um, not in a rush. Yeah. I have a couple uh, questions for you. Okay, well, I I I have two stories. The second one it means a great deal to me. Um, Roger and I are putting up corn stalks. We, we he arranges for us to buy the corn stalks, and you put one corn stalk on each pole. For downtown Friel, we're going to convert it to Halloween. So I'm, I'm putting up the cornstalk, and those things were heavier than blazes. So I'm putting it on, and you tie it, and then the bows come on and all that kind of stuff. An older, here, here, here I'm saying, an older, older couple, uh, you know, who am I to say, an older couple? Um, 
So an older couple comes by. I said, what, what are you doing? I said, well, we're putting up corn stalks, um, uh, and that will be followed by bows and, and all the other stuff. Um, Say, so that's great. And so I said, well, where are you from? He said, well, we're from Oregon. And in Oregon, we don't do any of this stuff that you're doing. And that reminded me of small town America. We're just small town America. My favorite. We're back to Glockamora. <laughs> it is. Well, this one is a Glockamora moment. Um, Dad put up the square for us to play basketball. He put up a rim. And Roger and I, if it was snow on the ground or whatever, we'd shovel it, but it was still there. And we put gloves on. You can't play basketball in gloves, but we did. And we played with gloves on, or, uh, and I was much younger and I was thin. Roger would beat the daylights out of me. We used to have, um, uh, for to, to open up the garage, you know, you had this, uh, like a fence type thing. Roger would hit me into that thing, but no blood, no foul. The thing that I remember in the story is, um, I looked up one time, Roger and I are playing, we're having fun. He's much better than I am. I didn't care, um, but but we and we had trees, and you'd shoot, and the tree would knock it down. Um, but all the while, I'd look up, and we had a shed, like an extension of the the back to go out into the into the backyard. There's our father, looking, just looking, and I I knew how proud he was. I'm the guacamole guy. And that's why, um, that's the story that I'll never forget. Roger and I are playing. We didn't know. He, Roger didn't know. But I'm looking at him and I said, damn, Dad's watching us. Like, with pride. So, that's my story. But we, we all, and you we know, we, co we co coached Little League, coached CYO basketball. And, you know, in, in those days, it was just... Yeah. Our parents raised us to give back to the community. Yeah. And so that's how the whole circle keep go kept going. Uh, you have many more volunteers in those days, but there were not as many distractions in those days as there are now. So um, it was a perfect time to grow up. People say to me now, wouldn't you rather grow up now with all the bells and whistles and all the sizzle? I said, no, absolutely not. Yeah. I, we grew up in the right time, uh, in the right place. Yeah, in small town America, we were Guacamole. Yeah, you should. Be. I, I that Guacamole is his. That's up. That's not mine. You should. If you can find it, uh, who was the big dancer? Um, the the really good male Fred dancer. Astaire? Fred Astaire. There was Fred Astaire. If it doesn't bring a tear, I'll buy both of you dinner. Um, I'll ask Roger if I can borrow some money, but I'll buy both of you guys dinner. Uh, but, I can but, tell you right now, it's not going to bring a tear to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that's all true. I love that. Um, one of the reasons why we do this is we like to try to remember some of the details about Freehold that maybe will be forgotten in 50 years. Something that you guys remember about the stores on Main Street or the people that worked in the stores or just local characters in town that, you know, they're not going to show up in books, but we don't want to forget. Who Seems like are. everyone always has a character from Freehold, someone they remember for, you know, just the, someone who was funny yeah. or nice. Or what, one of the characters that I remember, uh, there was a, a fellow that had a drinking problem. Um, I guess I could mention his name, uh, Johnny West. They, everybody knew him. And um, he would get, he would tie one on and get out in the middle of, of Main Street and South Street, and they had the little thing. He would direct traffic. Uh, they, yeah, they you know, and he's he's zonked and he's directing traffic uh, <laughs> with the cars. So that was the thing that used to happen often. Um, and then we had a uh, a fellow that um, well, w one of the things we had a lot more trains coming through town in those days. Uh, so we would hop on the trains and uh, take a ride. Uh, for a while, um, Johnny West was the one that I remember the most, and you know, and then and then there was another black fellow used to come into Murphy's Bar. Murphy's Bar was on South Street, mm -hmm. and uh, um, he used to come in there, and he was um, he talked about all his lovely ladies that love him, you know, and they used to call him Cool Breeze, mm -hmm. and he said, and my ladies, when I get out and I go out with them, they call me the Sweet Evening Breeze. 
you know. So it, that was another thing. It was a character. Um, but then the work, you know, um, uh, All Weathers Bar uh, was uh, a place, and uh, they had their share of uh, overnight fights and stuff like that, uh, you know. But but all the bars had, and the bar in um, Conway's Bar, which is now the Court Jester, uh, hunting was big in the area. And one of the things during hunting season, they would hang deer after they, they shot, shot there to drain uh, stuff. So you'd see five or six deer hanging out there. Wow. They couldn't do that now. I mean, uh, you know, that's, that was one of the things that was... And then um, um, I told you about the bowling alley. I loved the bowling alley. It was, it was nothing fancy about it. It just had like 10 lanes, um, had great pinball machines, uh, and, and a little luncheonette there. But uh, and then we had Newberry's and Woolworth's. Newberry's had it downstairs. We had a kitchenette. Um, had Dolly Madison's ice cream. Uh, our mother worked there for a while um, as a waitress. Uh, and then you had Porky, uh, Porky Press uh, place on, on Main Street, which was Lou Dye and Porky Press. And that was another hangout for the kids uh, to go in and... Uh, I had my first egg cream there, uh, which was a city thing, uh, but they brought it down here. Um, I'm not even sure what it was made of anymore. Uh, it's just like seltzer. And it is seltzer. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, no eggs, no cream. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, that's true. You know, you, you were saying uh, uh, the ones that, that were there back in the day and that are still there, part of Part of what I hope, there are certain ones that that can't go. Federici's, Spoon, um, Jersey Freeze has been around for a long, long time. Those that are still there way, way after the fact. Um, uh, you know, they're the only three that I know that, that are still intact. And there was something else I was going to say but I don't remember what it was does uh, Fed's look any different than it did no no it doesn't it, um, it's it celebrated its 100th anniversary a year ago or, or two years ago well, not too long ago but when you came in there we, we used to come in there after high school after basketball game or stuff like that and Danny Federici Dante Federici would be sitting right by the back and he'd watch you as you come in. It was a bunch of high school kids coming in. And you knew that if you carried on or did something wrong, Danny was going to throw you out. So He was a big guy. He, yeah, he was right there the whole time. And then his when father... When you say the back, you mean the... Because there's the... The Markey Yard the Markey the Yard entrance. Yeah. 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 They haven't... I don't think they've expanded it much. Um, uh, it's just... It's just... It's just the place to go. Well, yeah. and that was also in the days when you would uh, buy a pizza to take home. It came in a paper bag. Had the cardboard and then a paper bag. And that was a big deal. That was a, you know, also on Sundays you couldn't buy a uh, bottle of beer or that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. you, you get cardboard cartons. And, uh, you know, it would last for maybe 15, 20 minutes. Then it started buckling and stuff. So if you didn't drink it in time... You wound up, you know, with a crushed carton. Mm. But yeah, yeah. What what is so good about um, downtown Freehold? Again, being biased, biased in a good way, biased in in terms of one's love for the town, is um, you you just walk downtown. There's there's almost always something going on Thursday night with the with the music, um, and now they have something in the gazebo. Um, with um, uh, if, if you're up and coming, and, and, and you play the guitar, and you want to kind of be noticed, um, Jeff Freeman. He's wonderful. He he's a guy that there was a guy before him, but Jeff has expanded it greatly. Um, uh, but that's that's now. That didn't do anything yeah. for us when we were growing up. Oh, for you, uh, yeah. But but it's a continuation. I mean, we gave you a banjo and you retired and you haven't played a note. 
That's not true. I, I don't know how to play enough. I, t- <laughs> Still I, time. I, I used yeah. to teach American history. Uh, and I loved American That's history. That's the one I, thing I, he requested when he retired. I want to have a banjo and I want to play the banjo sitting on the porch yep. and just relaxing. Every well, once that while, was what, 20 years ago? Every once in a while I will pick it up. Yeah, because it's hard. I, I, I don't know if you guys play. I, I can get this part easy, but it's this part where you push Well, that's it down. the important part. Well, that's the part that I struggle <laughs> that's with. That's the hard part. I exactly. Always, I always tell Anybody people, could do this. I could do this. I tell right people I'm not that bright, and, this, <laughs> and every once in a while it's, it's, it's obvious. Uh, but but that but that's right. I, um, I used to love I used to love teaching the Civil War, and I used to love the music of the Civil War. I mean, it's some great oh, the banjo is a great sound. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I still got time. So that's what I will try. But I wanted to, there's something else I wanted to mention, but but I've it has left me. Maybe soon to come back. Oh. But no, I was going to mention, but that's probably on here. Um, Lily. I was just going to say, mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about a very important person. It's not who you think it is. It's not Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about well, Lily. Well, um, I'll tell you my part, and then certainly Roger can. Um, I loved her. I absolutely loved her. She is the nicest, kindest, most wonderful person I had ever met. Uh, I, I, uh, I was... Just to clarify for the people who are listening, it's Lily Ham Hendry. Yes, it is. Her her maiden name was Ham, Lily Ham, and then it's Hendry with a D. Okay. Um, so I'm chairing a committee, one one of the committees that we're on, and and so I I said to Lily, would 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 you be on? I said, you know everybody in town, and this is what we're gonna do, and anything that involved the kids, and almost anything that involved the adults, she was in. Easy, so uh, I would say I'll, I'll pick you up. She lives on. She lives right. Up, she lived right up the street. Uh, so no, no, I have a car. I'll, I'll come. I said okay. So then, um, uh, she could no longer drive be, because of age and some things. Um, so I said I'll pick you up. She said okay. So I'd pick her up, and she said just leave me off at the driveway. I said no. I said I'm going to walk you to. To, to your door and she said you don't have to do that I said yes I do so and she got mad at me so um, we used to do that but but um, she uh, she would never say she would she met the queen she would never tell you that she met Queen Elizabeth but she would never tell you that she did because that was like a form of bragging um, uh, she she for a long long time we do a thing called the McGacken which is the marriage recognition reception. And we honored two people, honored her a long time ago, before me. Um, but, but I said to her, would you be on the committee? Sure, sure, absolutely I would. Um, and, and, and so she, she would do it. And, and, she would, and we'd do a thing where, kind of like West Point when you get married, where you form two lines of former people like that. And then the, the recipients go right through it. Uh, and, and she would always be embarrassed to go out because she didn't think she was very deserving. She was just the most wonderful person. I've met, and she loved French. As much as we love it, she loved it equally as much. And uh, would do anything you asked her to do, bar none. Um, um, so. I, I never really had uh, much interaction or many inter- uh, interactions with uh, with Lily. Um, I knew her brother David Ham uh, better. He was a cop in Freehold, and uh, uh, I knew him. He was athletic and played basketball and stuff like that. So I played basketball against him, and I met Lily maybe a couple times, but I never had her as a teacher, um, and and never had her in school. So uh, I can't really talk to her. I I met her in later years. I got to know her pretty well. Um, or better, uh, but uh, she was just a kind lady. I mean, uh, and, and everybody speaks so well of her because that's the way she was, you know. Uh, it's not hard to speak well of somebody if that's the way they really are, you know. So, and that that's really the connection I had with her, that uh, uh, through different committees towards the end of her uh, time, you know. And she loved uh, Court Street School. 
um, when we were kids growing up, in front of the Court Street School were swings. Um, and we'd all go down there and play. And, and as I got to know her, she she just loved the school and she, she loved the history of the school. And um, I remember going to a few things that, that she and uh, her fellow workers, her fellow people that, that were part of, of bringing back Court Street School. Uh, and and she, she, she was tireless as a worker. You know, if, 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 if you think, well, Lily, I know kind of how old, but yeah, I would never say this to her, how old you are, I would never say that to her. But I said, why don't you just take a, no, no. You know, and she'd, she'd get upset with you. She, 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 she would never ask of you that old story. She would never ask of you what she couldn't do or wouldn't do. She, she'd jump in there right there with you. Um, so, and, and of course she loved Bethel AME Church. So, but I did love that lady. She was kind more than anything. So. Good person. Yes, she was. Did we miss anything? Probably. <laughs> yeah, and when we walk out the door, we'll think of all kinds of things we should have said. <laughs> Why didn't you know? we talk about this or that or? Yeah. I get one thing real quick. Have the uh, back in the '60s. I don't know the year, but there's a couple of big fires on Main Street. So do you have recollections of? Well, I think I think yeah, the biggest fire was the Strand Theater Strand fire, Theater, yeah. and that was um, started in a little pizza shop, and I think that was '67. Um, I it was just before I got into the department. Um, uh, I would have been twenty seven at that point, and uh, I got in like two years later, I think. Uh, but that was a that was a devastating blow uh, to Freehold. We lost some men's stores, uh, suit stores. Uh, Bart's was one of them that went down, um, and two or three other important stores uh, stuff. Uh, the second fire. Um, was the bowling alley, was the uh, up by Main Street, uh, was uh, by John's Bargain Store, uh, there was a paint store there, the Burns Weiss Brothers, um, and both of them were devastating to the town. I mean, uh, they, they took a lot of, they made a big dent, and they were never really filled um, again. Yeah. Uh, those businesses didn't come back. It was a Liberty Theater part of that yep. did, did that g g go yep that did, that went too that was when I was but a boy but but um, the weird uh, not weird but the, they were happened on two different sides of the street you mm -hmm. know by the Hall of Records was the first one right yeah and the second one was was um, um, right after, after by the where tracks by where Elmay's son is now yeah, yeah that, that area uh, so that I, was the what, which place was by Elmay's son the second fire, Liberty Liberty Theater and the Bowling Alley, the bowling alley. Uh, was all in that area. How'd that start? I don't remember the Liberty Theater. Um, one was a... Well, one started, the first one started in a, in a sign at the pizza shop. There used to be a little driveway through there going to the uh, to parking in the back. And it started in a, in a sign... Um, but in those days, they had the cock roofs, uh, cock loft, and it would ran, it ran the entire length of the building. And when they built, they just built this, and it, it was a void. And so they're fighting the fire here, and it's actually spreading all the way down. And there were firemen on top of the Strand Theater, um, and the fire was burning underneath them. Uh, we, we had a similar incident uh, when I was in the fire department. Uh, when the raceway burned down, that was another big, big uh, thing, and we were we were the first truck there. We answered a driver call. They said there was uh, some smoke coming from a ceiling fixture in the grandstand, so we pulled in there and we could see fire. So we went uh, to the right of the grandstand and we're standing on a roof, and we had a couple lines going in, and all of a sudden people told us they're yelling and screaming that there was fire underneath us. It burned underneath us as we were fighting the fire. So that was that was a big, and because it was a wide open area, it had plenty of oxygen, like a church fire, you know, it just was wide open. 
and uh, that was wild um, fighting that fire. But that, they're the they're the three biggest fires in in Freehold. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't for Joe McClune, they would have never rebuilt Freehold Raceway. Uh, he was very active in his, uh, with the state, knew all the politicians, and he pushed to rebuild that. And it was uh, it was his baby. Um, now, th- this is pre-Roger and myself, but I've read stories and seen pictures of how crowded the market yard was, like I'm guessing, on a Saturday or Saturday and Sunday. Uh, when they would bring all of their uh, vegetables to town to sell. They would sell them like you'd sell at the English Town Auction. Uh, and and I've seen pictures where they were just so crowded. That's historic, but certainly that has um, um, that has disappeared. And um, that is the parking lot behind yes, Yeah, that's and we used to... Great we, used, that. Yeah, it used to, go, used to go down there uh, with our father. I remember going with Dad... To buy Christmas trees. There was a guy that sold Christmas trees down there. And that's where he bought our Christmas trees. Yeah. Um, but that's the kind of stuff they sold. They sold everything down there, you know. And it was a market yard. It just sold everything. And looking at that picture, I can see how they got in. I cannot understand how they got out because mm-hmm. it's just so crowded. Um, but you know, I, you know what I often, I, and I, I thought about this the other day in preparation for thinking about today. And, 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 and Roger, it, it, it makes me feel very good that both of us are here, you know, I'm with my big brother, but, but um, which is a great thing. But um, uh, looking back and thinking, like all the things we talked about, you know, um, uh, Main Street and Main Street was where everything happened. There were all these other side streets, but it was Main Street. And we could go there by our bikes, walking, because we were, Hall Avenue was, as I said earlier, I don't mean to be redundant. We, it, just, it was at our disposal. If you didn't have fun or you thought this town stinks, well, that's your own fault because there's a lot of stuff um, that we did. Uh, I'll never forget one incident. Uh, I went to the Liberty Theater with a couple of my buddies, and I was probably eight or nine years old, and I saw the thing, the original thing. That was the one where they found they were in Alaska or somewhere in the Arctic, and they put this uh, blanket on this uh, ice. They found this thing in the ice, and they put a blanket on it, it melted, and the thing came along. That scared me so bad that when I came out of theater, I had to go up uh, Main Street and then go to Kiowa Avenue to Hull Avenue. My buddies went down, two of them lived on South Street, so they went down South Street. I'm by myself. And um, I was spooked uh, by what had happened in the movie, and there was a big uh, open space um, by where the Wells Fargo Bank is right now. That was Clark's uh, big, lots of uh, trees and things like that. I ran the center of the street all the way home Right there, because I was terrified uh, of that movie. But that's part of growing up. That's, that's the good part. That's part of growing up. Uh, I mean, we just... We knew a lot of people. Why? Because our dad knew a lot of people. Uh, and, 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 and that's how you got your first job. Right? That's how I got my first job. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, when Richie comes home, tell him, tell him to... Uh, Come over to, to my house. It's exactly right. You know, I got lucky. Uh, but I, I don't know if I got lucky. They didn't know me. Well, they knew me. But they knew me as Richie Kane. But they didn't know me. They knew my dad. Or my mom and my dad. And my our mom and dad had, had a very good reputation. Very, you know, they're nice people type thing. And that that goes a long way. And that's what got me my first job. That's absolutely true. Didn't get me my first job at Blueberry Acres, but uh, <laughs> the short-lived uh, it's yeah. short-lived. job there. Huh? Don't base your career on that. Yeah, that's, a true, that's a true story, though. Uh, but yeah, but that, that that's why people know of you. They may not know you, but they know of you because they know, like in in our case, your parents, um, and that just opens doors. But 
once it once that door is open, if you mess up or you stink or you, or or you're whatever you are, you are. Well, that job won't last long. Mm -hmm. So, but it opens doors for us. It allows us to come here and be with you guys. I'm so glad. Yeah. <laughs> and now that you've allowed us to vent. <laughs> did we cover I hope, you did you did. I hope we hit a couple then, good points for you yeah. to, to know a little bit you know I don't know what's it was what, great you know the the, the, the last last thing the, the greatest part and, uh, this come as practice I was going to say the greatest thing that we did I didn't mean it that way one of the enduring things that we've done is now that we're getting just a little bit older We've, we've worked on bringing in new people who just are going to take over, which is, which is a real compliment. You know, yeah, we started it and it didn't die. And, 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 and now the younger people are taking it over. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a great thing. Thank you so Good. much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I hope we didn't bore you. Not uh, at all. I would go on forever, but I know it's... Yeah, uh, but, uh, <laughs> it, it's just... As you can tell, we're very proud of where, where we came from. It's as simple as And I assume we'll not be seeing another skating rink anytime <laughs> soon. Well, not, <laughs> not on my watch. Uh -huh. or, 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 or be more than made up for it, though. We were, we were, we were so proud of that skating rink. It was really uh, And we're down at Firehouse and having our beers, and we're saying, man, this worked <laughs> out so well. And here, we think next year we should build a uh, ski jump. And um, hear about that lady. Just She's still sliding brakes, out here. Putting yeah. on her brakes and just sliding into South Street. <laughs> he was so angry. And we all knew him. You know, we all... Yeah. He was a fire. He was in my, my company, mm -hmm. uh, number two. And uh, he was mad. Um, Rod, I, I think Roger used to always sh say, oh, man, when I would come in after... Um, uh, come from the, the recreation from the playground, come in and say, Roger, I talk to you. I got an idea, um, I, you know, and, but but they were fun. Well, again, I, I say that uh, you could do things in those days. Um, oh. It was much easier to do it and then ask forgiveness mm -hmm. um, in those days. You permits and I, 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 Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. exactly. Now is there's so many regulations yeah. and stuff, you, you couldn't do them. I mean, uh, um, as I said, it was the right place at the right time, and I'm sure there are are uh, kids in other towns that could relate stories about the same. Uh, you know, we used to put uh, pennies on the railroad tracks and have them flattened out when the train came mm -hmm. by. Uh, you know, that was a big deal uh, to try and find it after they came by. <laughs> I have one last story. I'm the rec recreation director. I called, I don't remember how it happened, but I called... Um, swimming pool people at um, Camp Pepper, uh, which is in the township. And I said, listen, we don't have a lot of money. We never had a lot of money. Um, we don't have a lot of money, but I'd like to take the kids swimming one day a week. Get, can, <coughs> oh, God excuse bless me. you. Can they do it for free? Um, uh, can we do it for free? The guy says, I'll make you a deal. If you can get transportation, I'll let you come one day a week. <laughs> That's all I need. And I'll bring, I'll bring the um, um, counselors with me. He said, sure. So I go to Raja. I said, Raj, I can get free Camp Pepper and the kids can go swimming, which is what I want in the summertime. You got, it? You, you got the money? No, I don't have any money. So Raja said, go talk to Augie. Augie Daysner owned the American Hotel. Good guy. Good guy. Roger's very good friend. We're and friends with uh, Rich Days now. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, Rich's dad. Yeah. Yeah. So I go to Augie. Uh, and Augie was a Republican. Roger's a Democrat. They work very well together. I go to Augie. So, uh, and Augie was a uh, councilman in charge of recreation. I, I reported to him. I said, Augie. This one I did not know about I said, until after. I said, I need your help. He said, what? I said, I called Camp I Burn. I want to take the kids. These are black kids, white kids, big kids, little kids, all kinds of kids. Uh, wherever one went, everybody was going to go. Um, so he said, what's your problem? I said, I got, I got Camp Pepper to say, we well, can go there for free. All I got to do is bring the counselors, and, and the counselors will watch the kids. Yeah, he said, let me think about it. He comes back 
like the next day or so. He said, I solved the problem. I said, what? He said, um, we're going to take the kids to Camp Pepper, which was really a mile or two away. We're going to take the kids to Camp Pepper, and we're going to put them in the... Um, um, he didn't tell you you're going to put them in the dump trucks. In the dump trucks, yeah. <laughs> he told you we, we have transportation yeah. to take them. So, so, we'll get them there. So I got, exactly. That's exactly right. So we put the kids in like two different dump trucks. The parents, you, you, today, they kill you. The parents were, went nuts. They were so excited. <laughs> ah! They're waving to the kids. So we did that, I don't know, for one or two or three, as long as I was there. Uh, we did it. The kids loved it because they're standing. Nobody sits. Mm -hmm. They're standing in the dump trucks. They're going to Camp Pepper. The parents drop them off. They're waving to them like like they're going to um, Florida, you know. And I thought one of one of our greatest moves was taking them in a dump truck to go swimming, and they loved it. That was my, my last story. That's great. But mm -hmm. we had fun doing it <laughs> anyway. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much. I hope we gave you a little insight into growing up and down. Um, We're storytellers. Yeah, I love it. It was wonderful. No, you're the storyteller. I'm I just, the story I'm just trying to recollect what, you hear what I did. The banjo. You know. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is that little brook still leaping? Does it still run down to Donny Cove through Kitty Bay?